Hello, and welcome to This Is No Way To Live A Life But. Don't really know what I'm going to say today. I have MS, otherwise known as multiple sclerosis. And today I feel like shit. I have this perpetual headache been about five years. If you ever have had a headache for a half hour, hour or two, maybe even a day or so, you know it's not fun. Imagine having one for about five years. Feels particularly bad today on a scale of one to ten. I'm seven, eight. Usually I'm around a four or five. However, it could be worse. And in fact, it has been worse. When I first came down with this uh, headache, maybe it was a two or three out of 10. Spike two, and this is no lie, 20. Literally knocked me on my butt, 20 out of 10. Honest to God, fell on the floor, writhing in pain. Had to call an ambulance. My wife was going to drive me to the hospital. And I said, I can't get up. We need to get an ambulance. Ambulance came, the paramedics, we live on the second floor, looked at me, looked at their, uh, at the stairs and said, do you think you can make it down the steps so we can put you into the ambulance? One stood in front of me, one stood behind me and I went down the steps on my butt, boom, 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 got to the bottom. And they put me into the, uh, I forget what you call it, the uh, stretcher, stretcher, I think it is, wheeled me into the ambulance. It was an emergency for, I don't know, five, six, seven hours. Doctors thought it was an extreme case of vertigo. It eventually subsided from literally a 20 out of 10 in terms of pain to maybe a 12, 10, 9, as time progressed. I was actually able to walk home, head hurt, but I could walk. Headache was about an 8 out of 10 and it would spike occasionally, 15, 18, usually at night when I was trying to sleep. Went to see my GP. He sent me to an ear, nose, and throat specialist. I was tested for vertigo. You have to understand, at this point, I knew I had MS. MS symptoms come and go. And my symptoms had gone. And I can tell you about various symptoms that I had in, in a few minutes. Um, so I didn't think the headache was MS until the ear, nose, and throat specialist said, well, you don't have vertigo based on the tests we've run. I thought, damn, MS manifesting itself in a new and unique way. So why am I making this video blog? This is no way to live a life, but it's a question I ask myself today. Why make a video blog? I can't do a lot of what I used to do. I used to write as a freelance writer. I was a freelance journalist for 15 years, then a corporate writer for another 15 years or so. Uh, I was also a trainer. Can't do those things anymore. Don't have the strength, the energy, the stamina. When you have a perpetual headache, it, it becomes difficult to do stuff. But I can talk. So that's what I'm doing. Talking. I have a series of video blogs, if you're interested, on 
www.paullima.com, P-A-U-L-L-I-M-A forward slash MS. You see my blogs on MS, a couple of podcasts on it. Some other blogs too, because I can talk, I've created some training blogs. I used to train people on, on how to write, how to write email. Uh, I have written 22 books, one of which is called How to Write a Nonfiction Book in 60 Days. I have a video blog post on that and other stuff. There was a time in my life when writing books, keeping blogs would excite me. Ah, something I can do, something I'm good at. So I would do them. Hell, if I had discovered how to create video blogs 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would be very excited. I'm not excited now. I do this because I can do it. I'm doing it because my eyes are sore, so I don't want to read a book. I'm doing this because I can't work. I'm doing this because even though I have some great movies and TV series downloaded, I'm a pirate, arg. I download shit. I don't feel like watching any of it. I spend too much time sitting on my butt, sitting on my butt on the couch. We have a dog, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> throat, ah. Need to clear it. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. Okay, I'm talking. We have a dog, my wife and I do. And I walk him once, sometimes twice a day. When my wife is busy, picking up the slack of all the shit that I can't do around the house. She needs time. I'll walk the dog in the morning and the afternoon. Gives her a couple extra hours. She's really supportive. I'm sure gets frustrated at times because I'm not able to help her. But I know, I know it can be worse. Hell, I know it was worse when I was on a 18, 20 out of 10 pain. It was worse, believe you me. And I know people have it worse. I know there are people in wheelchairs to them, walking a dog, luxury. They can't do that. I know there are people who can't even move in wheelchairs. Hell, my, my niece, a dear, sweet, lovely person. She died from H1N1, age 45. Two kids under five years old. So I know this can be worse. But today it feels about as bad as it can get for somebody who is alive. I laugh at that word. It doesn't feel like much of a life. I know it is what it is. There are people in worse condition. Be thankful for what you've got. I could be in worse condition. I am what I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I can talk. Maybe I should do stand-up comedy. But I'm not a funny guy. I've got a sense of humor and I like to laugh. But tell jokes. Knock, knock. Who's there? I haven't got a clue. That's not me. And, and I hate to whine and whinge about what I have. I know a lot of people with MS. I go to a support group. I communicate in groups online with people. I know I am better off than some, worse than others. You know, but this is my life. It's what it is. It's all that I have. It's what I have to talk about. I don't even know if I'm going to post this feels like I'm talking about nothing because I really have nothing.
nothing to say. However, if you go to paulima.com slash ms, you'll see I do have things to say in my other video blogs about MS. What it is, why it is, how it affects people, what other people have to say about it, what healthy people who are partnered with people who have MS have to say. All of that is there. Today, I just feel like, I don't know, talking about nothing. What was that Seinfeld show? where they were pitching Seinfeld to the network. I think they were pitching the show called Jerry and it was show about nothing. What happens? The producer asks. absolutely nothing. Something must happen. Jerry is about to say, well, yeah, but George steps and says, no, absolutely nothing. Nothing happens. And today, I feel like that is my life, a life in which nothing happens. Can't read, don't want to play games, don't want to watch TV. What am I got? Nothing. So I'm talking and saying nothing. I know there are other people with MS in various conditions. They do what they can do. We do what we can do. So this is what I can do today. Nothing. Flap my lips, move my vocal cord, let words come out. That mean what? Am I depressed? Not clinically, but I don't feel good right now about what I have, about the life that I have to live. And why the hell should I feel good about it? Yes, it could be worse. I keep on hearing that in my head. It could be worse. I have friends who are supportive. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Pete. If you're watching this, I have a family, family members who are as supportive as they can be. Hi, Ruth, partner Anita. Hi, sister Jeanette. Hi, brother Patrick, who lives north of Toronto four or five hours and I never see. We email on occasion. I have a wife, Lynn, who is incredibly supportive. I don't know how she does it. She broke her ankle a number of years ago. And for two, three weeks, I did the cooking, I did the cleaning. I would bring things to her, would entertain her, you know, or put books on her e-reader, TV shows for her to watch. She couldn't get up, she couldn't move. And then slowly she got better. So I know a little bit what it's like to care for somebody. She's been taking care of me for the last five years. And hey, I can walk and I walk the dog. That's what I can do. Uh, I actually have a client I might be doing some work for. Not writing, not training, but formatting a book. You have to understand formatting a book is simply moving your cursor over words, clicking on buttons. No real thinking, not if you know what you have to do. So, hey, if you're an author and you want to self-publish your book and you don't know how, go to paulima.com, send me an email and I can format your book and I can get out there as a print book and uh, an ebook, Kindle, EPUB, which is a Kobo, uh, PDF, create your cover. These are things I can do. Although if I were working for you, I probably wouldn't be doing it today. Today, it's not like I feel like doing nothing. I've worked for 40 years, 45 years, always doing something. I have 
a good work ethic, a strong work ethic. I like to work. I like the work that I've done. Trust me. I'm not doing nothing because nothing is what I want to do. I'm doing nothing because nothing is what I can do. And yeah, in a couple hours, I will get up off my butt and I will walk the dog, putting one foot in front of the other. Every 20 minutes or so when I'm walking him, I have to sit down and rest, rest for three, four, five minutes, and then we carry on. He's a great dog. He sits patiently waiting for me. It's like he knows. Hell, you know what? This program I'm using to record this, Loom, lets me pause things. I'm going to pause and get rid of this screen. I'm going to show you a picture of my dog. I'll be back in a moment. Ah, to heck with showing you pictures. I'm going to show you a video. Here we go. This is Quinn at his early age. Don't know which one Quinn is. He was part of a litter of, I think, eight puppies. You can see four, five, six. Quinn is a giant schnauzer. And I will show you a picture of the giant dog. He's a beautiful fellow with a great disposition. So he's one of, one of these guys. Uh, Quinn's large for a giant schnauzer, so he's probably the largest of these puppies. But you can't see them. Hang on, we'll get to see a more grown-up Quinn in a second. <laughs> the talking you hear is me talking on the video. That's Quinn, the bigger black dog playing with an old friend of his. Quinn's maybe a, a year there. Hey, what do you know? This video has become about something. It's become about my dog, Quinn. He's playing with Bailey. Bailey's the black and white dog, giving Quinn a shit kicking. High Park, Toronto. Okay, one more Quinn video, and then we'll get back to nothing. This is Quinn playing with the dog, who's actually bigger than he is. And this is a more full-grown Quinn. He's 27 inches tall, weighs about 100 pounds. He's playing with an Irish wolfhound. The wolfhound, sadly, has uh, passed away. They're not really playing, but they were good friends. They played hard. There we go. Have a good shake, Quinn. That's a good boy. And then he walks off into the sunset. Oh, there we go. There's a video that's a little bit longer than I thought. So that's him. That's our Quinn. 27 inches, 100 pounds, giant schnauzer. And that's his buddy. I forget the name of the Irish wolfhound. But the guy is bigger than Quinn. People say, oh, you've got such a big dog. I say, well, then you've never seen a Great Dane or an Irish Wolfhound because they dwarf Quinn. Anyway, it's Quinn playing, playing with his friend. And now we'll get back to nothing, nothing and nothingness. Nothing and nothingness. I feel a little bit like uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. I think he wrote a book called Being in Nothingness. I could go to the web and, and look it up, but uh, I don't know. Call me lazy today. So anyway, this has been, this is no way to live a life, but more about my dog Quinn than me. Well, okay, the first part was about me and how freaking depressed I am and how I can't do anything today. Again, I just want to stress this. I'm not clinically depressed. You know, I'm just feeling pissed off because I'm feeling so bad that I really can't do anything. And you can say, but you can walk your dog. Yes, I can. I can put one foot in front of the other. 
just don't ask me to think, don't ask me to lift, carry anything, don't ask me to do any work for a client. Don't ask me to do anything other than sit on my butt and talk, which I can do, or sit on the couch and stare off into space. Hey, if anybody has any ideas of things they think I can do, knowing my limitations, and knowing some days I have more energy than today, although the freaking headache never goes away. Um, anyway, if you have any ideas of stuff you would like to see me do, stuff you would like to see me talk about, uh, but we don't know you, I'll go to paulima.com and P-A-U-L-L-I-M-A.com and you will see who I am. So if you have any ideas of stuff you'd like to see me try to do or try to talk about, send me an email, paullima.com at gmail.com. Yes, there are two dot coms in that email address, paullima.com at gmail.com. If you go to my website, you can send me an email from there. Maybe together we can find some way to live a life. We can find some things for Paul to do. Maybe you and I can do things together, you know, using this amazing thing called the internet and, and email. We can find some things for us to do. I'm not looking to do stuff that makes money. I'm looking to do stuff that's interesting and fills time. Because that basically is all I have left to do is fill my time in whatever way I can. And if you go to paulima.com slash MS, you will see that I filled my time creating a number of video blogs, podcasts, and training webinars. I read books, sometimes good books, sometimes not so good books. Oh. If you like to read, um, and if you're old enough to remember the Vietnam War or to have lived when it was going on, read The Saboteur. Saboteur. I forget the name of the author. The heck with it. I'm going to go find out. This is such a damn good book. The Saboteur. Hang on. I'll be back in a minute. You see, I'm going to press the pause key. I'm going to find out who this book is written by. Okay, I was wrong about the title of the book. The book is called The Sympathizer by Viet Than Nguyen. Viet, V-I-E-T, Than, T-H-A-N-H, Nguyen, N-G-U-Y-E-N, The Sympathizer. If you remember the Vietnam War, if you were alive uh, when that war was happening, you have to read this book. It's from the point of view of somebody who is half Vietnamese, half French, but has lived in Vietnam, was educated in the US. Uh, he's working for some people in the South, an army. He's like an attendant, a corporal assistant for a general, for, excuse me, for a general, but he is a symp sympathizer with the North. So you're getting the perspective of the North and the South. The end of the war, he goes to the US. So the book begins in Vietnam, he ends up in the US. You're seeing this war from a whole new perspective and you're seeing the life of Vietnamese people in the US. I won't give more away, a lot more happens. Not only is it an amazing story, as in it's a really strong, powerful story. If you like strong narrative voices, which I do, uh, the voice of the main character is incredibly powerful. And the writing, the writing is absolutely wonderful. In fact, let me see if I can find a little bit of writing for you. Here, I'll just give you the beginning of the book. I am a spy a sleeper, a spook, a man of two faces. Perhaps not surprisingly, I am also a man of two minds. These are, this is a theme, it is establishing a theme that runs through the book. 
I am not some misunderstood mutant from a comic book or a horror, or a horror movie, although some have treated me as such. I am simply able to see any issue from both sides. And he gives you the perspective of Vietnam from both sides. An incredible perspective. Sometimes I flatter myself that this is a talent. And although it is admittedly one of a minor nature, it is perhaps also the sole talent I possess. At other times when I reflect on how I cannot help but observe the world in such a fashion, I wonder if what I have should even be called a talent. A talent, after all, a talent is something you use, not something that uses you. The talent you cannot use, the talent that possesses you, that is a hazard, I must confess. But in the month, in the month when this confession begins, my way of seeing the world still seem more of a virtue than a danger, which is how some dangers first appear. And let me tell you in that last sentence, but in the month when this confession begins is key, is crucial. It takes a long time for me to get what that sentence means, but that really is what the book is about. Anyway, it's an absolutely beautiful, wonderful book. And I've just lost the book, doesn't matter. It's called The Sympathizer. If you like to read, and if you have MS and like me, you spend a lot of time sitting on the couch, get The Sympathizer. Wonderful book. I mean, I read a lot of genre fiction and you know, it's it's passable, interesting stories, characters, you know, murder mystery, uh, mystery of some sort or other. But this was a book that transported me. So that was The Sympathizer. Oh, maybe I can tell you about a few more books uh, and some TV shows and movies I like. Maybe this video blog will become about something after all. Okay, welcome back. Um, Wallace Stegner. As you can see there, this is where I store my books in, uh, in my, on my computer. Wallace Stegner is an author in the 30s, uh, an incredible writer. I would suggest Crossing to Safety as his strongest book, but I would read any of Angel of Repose, Big Rock County Mountain, Crossing to Safety, uh, and The Bird. These are four books by Wallace Stegner. Discovered him by accident. Absolutely amazing writer. Uh, color, colorless Tsukuro, T-S-U-K-U-R-U, Tasaki, T-A-Z-A-K-I. Colorless Tsukuro, Tasaki was a wonderful book. Defending Jacob, a uh, bit of a genre book, but it uh, cut above. Really enjoyed it. Will Ferguson. You probably don't feel sympathetic about anybody who sends you spam. But 419 by Will Fer Ferguson will actually make you feel sympathetic for spammers. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society Great book, World War II, Guernsey Island, occupied by the Germans, but it's part of England. Highly recommend it. And final book, Half Broke Horses. Oh, let me tell you about two books. Half Broke Horses, read it a while ago. I just remember really liking it. Uh, Room, they made a movie out of Room by Emma Donahue. Room was an absolutely amazing book. Um, and the movie is really good. I, I read the book, watched the movie. Usually when I read the book and then watch a the movie, the movie kind of falls flat because you can't do everything that was done in the book. In this case, I would say Room, read the book, and or watch the movie. Okay, one more book. The Beauty of Humanity movement takes place also in Vietnam. 
is an absolutely sweet, wonderful book. Author is Camilla Gibb, The Beauty of Humanity Movement. So that's it for books from me. That's it for books for me. As I said, I, I think I'm going to leave this video blog there. So this video blog about nothing except how pissed off I am at the way I feel has become a book about something, about Quinn the Giant Schnauzer, or has become a video blog about something, about Quinn the Giant Schnauzer, and about some books that I have found quite fascinating. As I say, all cut above your typical genre books. So there we go. This is no way to live a life, but I have a dog who I'm able to walk every day. And most days when I'm feeling better, I am able to read some books. And I've read some books that I've recommended to you. If you're sitting on your ass on the couch and you can't do much of anything, or even if you can do something, but you get to the point in the day where you have to sit on your ass on the couch. I know that happens to a lot of people with MS. If you want to read, I've given you the names of some books to read. And what I may do is come back and do another video blog in which I tell you about some of the TV shows we watch and some of the movies we watch. What the heck? Maybe I found something new to do while I'm dealing with me and my MS. By the way, one last point I want to make. Okay, I said one more thing. As you know, if you've been listening, <laughs> uh, I've been a writer for the last 40 years. I'm also a book author. If you go to paullima.com forward slash books, you will see the 22 books I've written. This is one of them, everything you need to know about multiple sclerosis. Uh, you know, what do they say about writers? Write what you know about. So most of my books are about writing. I've had MS for like 20 years, so I've written a book about MS. There are no silver bullets, no magical cures, nothing. It's like from a journalist perspective, everything you need to know about MS. I'm not trying to sell you the book. I can't afford to give the print copy, Kobo or Kindle copies away. However, if you want the PDF of everything you need to know about MS, simply send an email to msandmebook at gmail.com. That's all one word, msandmebook at gmail.com. In the subject line, put MS PDF, and I will send you a free PDF of the book, Everything You Need to Know About MS. It's my way of trying to do a little bit to give back to the community. So if you're newly diagnosed with MS and you wonder what's in store, hey, you won't feel as depressed as I seem right now, honest to God. I'm not like this every day, it's just today. Uh, but if you want to know what's in store, what the potential is, uh, if you want to see how people react, if you want to know about diet and exercise and things like that, this book has all of it. There's no silver, silver bullet. I'm not trying to sell you anything. There's no silver bullet because there is no cure for MS. I'm not trying to sell you anything because I've got nothing to sell. So if you want to know everything you need to know about MS, written, as they say, as if a journalist, which I was for 15 years, were investigating a topic and writing about it, that's what you get. You get a book about everything you need to know about MS, meds, diagnostics, etc., cetera, et cetera. Maybe I should turn the book into an audio book read it to people. <laughs> anyway, if you want a free PDF, msandmebook at gmail.com, subject line MS PDF, and I will happily send you a free PDF, free PDF of my book, everything you need to know about MS. Anyway, thank you for listening. Here, I'm going to turn to the camera and look right at you. So I was even too lazy to move the computer in front of me move the monitor back. So the 
cameras on an angle. Anyway, thank you for listening, for putting up with me. Um, so from Quinn and I, goodbye. Have a good day. Take care. Talk to you later.